next thing we see, he moves down from his eyes to his feet. And says his feet were like burnished bronze, refined as a furnace. Burnished bronze was the hardest metal they had back in those days. This was before the age of steel. It was before the age of you know, titanium, atom, atom, antium. It doesn't exist, but it'd be great if it did. And the feet were signs of victory, of conquering. What did he say in chapter, in, 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 I think of the song Romans 16, 19 says, the excellent of what is good, and the God of peace will soon crush Satan. God will crush him underneath his feet. Feet. Stand, uh, the <coughs> Genesis narrative comes to mind. He says, he will crush him and he will bruise you. He, he will crush him with your feet. They were crushed with the feet. The feet standing strong uh, is a sign of victory, a sign of I have overcome the world, a sign that phrase is going to come up. I have overcome. Only the overcomers, the ones who will stand on their ground and conquer their, dad, their enemies with their feet. In the old times, the biblical times, when they would finish their be victorious over their enemies. They would put their foot on their enemy's neck and say, I have conquered you. Feet of bronze are a sign of conquering all the enemies of this world. I have overcome the world. I have conquered the world. And finally, he got his voice. His voice voice was like the sound of many rushing waters. His voice before the, beforehand was like a trumpet, right? He got his voice being considered as a trumpet and a sound of rushing waters. Have you, it, you, many times, I think this, let's go back to Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Everybody see that movie? Remember that part where he's, uh, everybody loves Indiana Jones. You know that part where he ski, he's stops and his feet are burning, right? Then all of a sudden, what do you hear? He's like, water, water. And what do you hear? The sound of rushing water coming out of water that fills the entire cave. It's not a sound you can just say, oh, you can't just turn around and suddenly and so be confronted with a bunch of water. You can hear it coming a mile away. It's a sound you can't ignore. You stand over Niagara Falls and you can't talk to somebody in a whisper. Why? It's I'll never hear you. You've got to talk at the, at the, as loud as you can because the rushing waters can, are covering your sound. You can't talk over it. Even if you talk as loud as you can, you have people hear you like this. The sound of rushing waters. If you can't get to Niagara Falls, which I've never been, but I've heard about it. But if you stand even by a rough river, you've got the same problem. The sound of Jesus cannot be ignored. The voice of Jesus cannot be ignored. It can't not, it can't not be heard. I use that a prop, that's a proper sense. It wasn't a, it was a double negative on purpose. It has to be heard. It will be heard. Because out of the mouth of Jesus is a two-edged sword that will cut and destroy and, and it's, it's sharp. It's powerful. It's not something that you can get away from. It's a sharp two-edged sword. Now, no, Jesus didn't. I don't think Jesus appeared actually holding a sword in his mouth. That's why we can't draw that picture. But it was this voice and the words that he's saying. Think about it. The word of God. This is called, Paul called this the sword of the spirit. We call it the word of God. Creation was created by what? The word of God. God spoke. And it was. 
it was good. God spoke it into existence. The word of God cannot be ignored. And in his right hand, he held the seven stars. And he was standing in the middle of seven golden lampstands. Or seven, it doesn't say golden lampstands, does it? No. Yeah, it does. Seven golden lampstands. I thought I was reading that in there, but it's actually in there. These are the most powerful images yet. I reveal more about them that's refined to us than anything else. He says the seven stars in my right hand are the seven angels of the seven churches. Now there's nowhere in the Bible that says every church has their own angel. But this has been translated, I I think I agree with this, as, as the seven stars, the angels, are also considered messengers, the seven messengers of the churches i.e. the seven pastors of these churches. God is telling us here, telling his pastors that he's holding us in his right hand. That he's protecting us. That he's guiding us. That he's directing us. And any pastor worth his salt yields to this right hand of God. Any pastor worth his salt, you have, any pastor worth anything following after God realizes that I'm in the protection of God's right hand, I'm in the palm over God's right hand, and if he chooses to, I can no longer be in God's right hand. He put me down and set me to the side for for a while. Youth pastors and associate pastors, I think we're safe, because, you know, it says the messenger. No. (laughs) Youth pastors and associate pastors, we're in the same boat. We're protected by God but we're still responsible to God for beholding to God. And uh, going back to the book of James, it says anybody who teaches is going to be held more responsible or held up to a higher standard than the ones we teach. And I'm like, whoa. So if you're thinking about being a pastor or a youth pastor or a teacher, remember that. Remember that he's going to hold you more accountable, but also remember that he's going to hold you in his right hand. Let me hold you in a place of honor. The rest of us, are, the rest of you guys, are, oh, God says, I've got you under cover too. You're still protected. You're still my children. I still hold you up. I still protect you. I am still with you. The other image, and that's best seen in the other image, the seven golden lampstands. He says these seven lampstands are what? The churches. And where is Jesus standing? To the side, at a distance from those seven lampstands? Hovering above seven lampstands, looking down on them? Below them, holding them up? the left? No. It says he's standing in the middle of these seven lampstands. He's standing among them. He's standing in the midst of them. He is here with us. He says these seven lampstands are the churches. I am in the middle of these churches. I am with every single one of them. I am connected to every single one of them. And not one of them has a higher place of honor than the other. And I am with them all. I am the middle of them all. When John heard all this, What's what's amazing is that when John saw this for the first time, what did he do? He didn't do what we think pastors do nowadays and say, yeah, Jesus, buddy, how you doing? All right, I'm with Jesus. Great, I'm glad you're here. It's the buddy Jesus, you know. When John saw this, he said he fell down and he worshipped. He was in awe. He was in holy reverence, fear. He 
Philip's a dead man. And he worshiped God. And Jesus left him that way. I moved on. Worship me in fear. No. He touched him on his shoulder and said, John. He touched him with the same hand he was holding the pack, the preacher's up. Did you realize that? The right hand. He reached out with his right hand. And he touched John and said, John, get up. It's okay. It's me. I'm the first and the last. The beginning of the end. God is with us. Jesus is with us. He's in the midst of us. He's among us. He's protecting us. He is our high priest. He's the one who stands between us and God. He is the one who sacrifices, prays for us, loves us, judges us, refines us. He is with 